Final two minutes here, Monday Night Football, week two. The New York Jets hosting the Cleveland Browns. Cleveland is up 23-3. This is the first ever Monday Night Football matchup back in 1970, which was 50 seasons ago. And the Browns are about to improve to 1-1. One one. Jets are about to fall to 0-2. The Browns next week are going to be on Sunday Night Football against the Rams. First time the Browns will be on Sunday Night Football since 2008. Baker at 325 yards on the night. Did have that one interception and then, of course, had the spectacular play, the hookup with Odell Beckham Jr., Delay of game, offense, that penalty is declined, worked out. Now think about how the Jets are going to manage this situation now. As Of course, we'll be getting an update soon enough on Trevor Simeon, knowing Sam Darnold is out with Mono, sitting there with Luke Falk. I mean, yeah, the for the Jets, team. they have quite the Bring quarterback the situation middle. going on right now. Well, we have to play with the Darnold is out with Mono. Trevor Simeon, the backup, is out with, with a leg injury. You have Le'Veon Bell. You have Jamison Crowder. You have Demarius Thomas, and we haven't even mentioned tonight. With the use of weapons that you have, you can't worry about the guys that you don't. You know, you consider the Jets roster, and I know there was a lot of sizzle to the offseason when you pick up Le'Veon Bell and you think about the development of Sam Darnold, but here's the reality of it. You have 52% of the players are new to the team. That's the third highest rate in the NFL. And they only drafted 15 of their players. That's the fewest in the league. So it, the reality is, yes, there was an uptick. Yes, there was a lot to look forward to. But thin in spots. Then you catch injuries the way things have gone, obviously, at the quarterback position. And you're in a bit of a transition. And let's not forget, Mike McCadden is fired. In comes Joe Douglas. You're trying to reshape the roster a little bit. Adam Gase is the guy who's in charge, though. He's got to get, especially the offense, he's got to get the offense going and get everybody together. Now, Joe Douglas, by the way, who was hired in June when they parted ways with Dave McCagnan, the new general manager, this is a guy that is very highly thought of. He was under Howie Roseman in Philadelphia. He was with Ozzie Newsom in Baltimore, but they feel that they have a very... Le'Veon Bell is still him. searching for his the first win as a New York Jet. As he's in place, says Falk. Is finding a little bit of a rhythm with I'm not even Anderson sure of their schedule. In this second half. Yeah, Jets will be hosting well. another Monday night game in a few Anderson. weeks against now the you Patriots. You can start to see how they can move the ball, but it's going to be on Adam Gates. If you're going to be an offensive savant, you got to create some plays and design an offense to use the guys that you have. That is batted and then falls, leaving 16 seconds left. Chris Smith got a piece of that. Baker Mayfield talked about staying focused, not panicking after everything that went wrong week one. They did that tonight. OBJ was clearly inspired to come back here to this stadium and put on a show. He did that tonight. So, uh, this is Odell Beckham's yards. first return to MetLife Stadium since he was he traded. With 11 seconds left. Luke Falk getting himself some experience. Just the wrong home team. Second season out of Washington State. Ten seconds left to go here in the fourth. For Mike Leach. He went on to be one of the most prolific passers that the West Coast has ever seen. Speaking of Mike Leach in Washington State, how about Gardner Minshew with the Jags, another Washington State quarterback coming off the bench. Did you see his outfit getting off the plane? Oh, <laughs> Hey, we opened up the night with talking about Joe Namath's swag. <laughs> Minshew's not bashful, is he? Oh. There's Montgomery here. Two seconds left to flag on a and play. And the flag is down with two seconds remaining. Speaking of Minshew, I've never seen someone unbutton their shirt down to the bottom button like Minshew did. Oh, no, you were connected in New York where I grew up and back in the 70s. <laughs> trust me, you, you saw things. Joe, use a helmet here at the end of the ball game. Lower and lead with the helmet. Harry, I like how you analyze officiating right down to double zeros on the clock. <laughs> you keep it coming, John Perry. 
personal foul, lowering the head to initiate contact. Defense number 51. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Mac Wilson. Yeah, that penalty makes a huge difference in the outcome of the game. I'll put that thing down. We'll have one last time to line it up with Luke Falk. And the Browns will take a moment to celebrate their first win on Monday Night Football since 2008. Baker's Monday Night Football debut. To be fair, how many times have they been on Monday Night Football since 2008? The one night that he could stay up late. Well... Their last win on Monday Night Football was against the Giants, actually, when they beat them 35-14, to picking off Eli Manning four times. Seven straight home losses for the Jets. That is the longest active streak in the NFL. That is terrible for the Jets. Jets are 0-2. Browns are 1-1. Next week, Redskins hosting the Bears. comes back to this spot and has six catches for 161. Next Monday night, we got Bears and Redskins. As it's time to send it to the Ram Trucks post game report on SportsCenter with Scott Van Pelt. For Lisa and Booger, I'm Joe Tessitore saying good night. Enjoy the rest of your evening with SVP.